right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Paul Hussar, who is over in Tampa, Florida. How are you doing, Paul? I'm doing well. I think you and I are, are perhaps the only two people in the country doing well right now. It's gorgeous <laughs> in Tampa, luckily the same in San Diego. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good here too. Absolutely, absolutely. And Paul is the president and CEO of Vector, Vect, Vetcor. I was going to say Vector, Vetcor LLC and Team Vetcor. And uh, Vetcor provides services to consumers, insurance agencies, and insurance companies um, across the country. Uh, you're specialized in insurance services, specializing in water mitiga mitigation, other insurance related related services, but most importantly, staffed by veterans of the US military. And that's what we're going to talk about today is how you convert military culture norms and value into a brand that that pops. So Paul, let's get let's get right into it. Um, obviously, you have an extensive um, military background. And um, oftentimes, I mean, people think that uh, the way things are done in the military, uh, you know, you need to change them to bring them into the into the corporate or the private space and they're, it's very different like the military is very rigid and the private uh, sector is is all kind of fluid and all of that which isn't quite true but anyway so but tell me what is it what is what does the, what does the private sector have to learn from the military yeah well it, it starts with you know we're in a point in time in our nation's history where only about seven percent of the population have ever served our veterans and less than a, and a half a percent actively serve. And it's going downward because our military is downsizing. You know, the veterans are an older population. World War II veterans are dying. Yep. Um, Korean War veterans are dying. So we're getting farther and farther apart from those we have sought to you know, protect and defend in our culture. And so as a result, there's these myths that perpetuate um, and it's only gonna get worse over time if we don't do something, we don't get out here, and which is why I appreciate you helping me tell the story. Um, you know, there's people see military folks in movies and things like that. And they just, they think, oh, we follow orders rotely. Well, we follow orders, but we do that in, in a way where we're inspired by leadership, right? And we understand purpose, commander's intent, two levels above, nested. So we follow orders, but then we make them better because we use our initiative. And that's why the US military is the greatest in the world is the initiative of the small unit leader. Yeah, and, and if you like, uh, I mean, you think about it that um, actually, you know, the private sector, there's often like quite a lot of rigidity and there's less initiative allowed to be shown uh, down, the, down, the, down the ranks. Um, so uh, so what, are some of the, what are some of the cultural aspects of the military that you think like really can help infuse a brand? Well, so first of all, you know, we talk about, my, the name of my company is Vetcor, right? So it, it's on our shirts, it's on our vehicles, it's everywhere. But one of the things I caution veteran entrepreneurs and veteran business owners about is, is don't make that your sales pitch. Hey, um, hire us because we're veteran owned and veteran operated, right? Because if you do that, you're asking for a handout. You know, oh, we served and so therefore you should give back to us. No. So talk about, and what we do is why, what are those different? And so for example, if you think about when's the last time you had a service call of any kind at your home, John, and when did that service provider tell you they were going to be there? Right. You know, it was yeah. probably like a four hour window. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and then they probably didn't even show up within that four hour window. They were late and didn't call. Right. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about the brand of veterans. And, and we like to say the brand of VetCorp, a brand known for timely, quality, reliable service and the value of veterans. So when do veterans show up? Veterans show up early because early is on time and on time is late, right? And so when you put it that respect, now who, what kind of service provider do you want to call it? It's, a, it's an advantage, right? You want one that's going to show up early, not time windows, time. So that's just one example of that. Does that make yeah. sense? No, that makes complete sense. And I think that's a fantastic example because I, I, absolutely, because I think that whole, that whole attitude of 
early is on time on time is late i mean that's a very that's a that's a very number one it's a very customer centric approach right. um it's a very so service oriented one and above all it, it's a very accountable it's like personal accountability that's my uh, and and you're correct. You don't get that from a lot of service providers. And I've noticed they've, uh, you know, everybody's suddenly putting in Windows service windows now, or when the window when somebody can come right. to your house, even if they're down, you know, they're a, a business down the street, and you're going really. So let, let's talk about that for a second, right? I don't understand this concept of service windows. And here's another advantage to a brand that primarily hires veterans. Again, don't hire us because we're veteran owned and primarily veteran operated. Right, that would be a handout. But I, I don't know. M most of our project managers within our franchise system, and and it, and actually in the, the company-owned office that I own here in Tampa, right, are are manned by managers who are non-commissioned officers in the United States military, right. And I don't know very many non-commissioned officers in any branch of service that can't get a group of guys and a group of gals to be at the right time, at the right place with the right kit to do the mission and, and accomplish the mission, right? It's just, it's operational planning and operational management and execution. So again, because we hire veterans primarily and because they come with this management and leadership experience, early is on time, on time is late, and they show up fit, polite, on time, treat you with dignity and respect as a group of guys and gals with the right kit, at the right place, at the right time and accomplish the mission. Yeah, no, I, th I think I, th I think it's I think it's fascinating, Paul, because when you use that analogy, it's uh, it's interesting. Yeah, because you think about it, if if you all in the military like showed up for a mission, but two two people were missing because they were still <laughs> stuck, they're still stuck at the last mission or something else happened. So I'm sorry, you know, you've got your gun crew here, but the guy with the gun, actually, he'll be here later. Right because he had to stop off somewhere else. I mean, that's that's our experience. I mean, that would be completely unworkable, obviously, in 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 a military context. But we've we've conditioned ourselves to be so accepting of poor service. Why is that? I, I don't understand it. And, and you know, I, I have to deal with it. You know, if I have someone coming to my house and if they if they tell me they're going to be there at a certain time and they don't show up, I leave and then I'll get, you know, some some call. Well, you know, we're, we're here. I said, well, well, too bad. Well, you're going to have to pay for the service call. I said, no, 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 no. Right. And so just if, whoever wants to charge me for that, have them give me a call and make sure that they understand what my position is. I'm the CEO of a, of a service brand here in Tampa and a national franchisor of a service brand. And we're not playing that game because if we can figure it out, you can figure it out. And, and the problem is, you know, um, People just don't understand when that happens, right? That they're conveying to you that their time is more important than your yep. time, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and for a veteran, God forbid that we did that because now not only are, are we screwing up for ourselves, we're screwing up for our brand and fellow brothers and sisters in arms. So that's another thing that's kind of the power of the brand because that's why we wear it, you know, promptly and, and you know, figuratively right here on our chest so we can say this is who we are. And we're not going to kind of let our brother, fellow brothers and sisters you know, let them down. Yeah. And I think that's a really important point that you just made there, because I think that's another big, big, big difference in in that uh, because of coming out of the military, everything you do, you know, you're doing it as part of a team and you're you're worrying about, you know, your brother on the right, your sister on the left or whatever, all these people. But you know that you have to, in order to be successful. You have to operate as a team, you know, cohesively and on all of that. Um, I think that's that that's that's a value that's not always represented in work, because although, yes, you have teams, often you have people who really only care about their own bit or don't care about the team as a whole or whatever. They don't have that inbuilt uh, because with, obviously with the military, I mean, teamwork is critical to life or death. Well, and, and all of us, right, all of us have to. We, we have to have a job. We put food on the table, take care of our families, right? And so that's that's important, but it's not enough. And so if you can create this brand in, in any company, and in our case, we've just done it because it's we believe in a bigger purpose. We have a vision to become the premier private employer of veterans and the brand known for timely, quality, reliable service and the value of veterans. And when you can get the rest of your teammates to believe in that, so the better we do, the more opportunities we're creating for fellow veterans. Now, 
they're they're part of something bigger than themselves, right? And when mm-hmm. you get people in an organization to believe that they're part of something bigger than themselves, they're not just coming to work for a paycheck. They're coming to work for a purpose. Yeah. And again, I think that's an that's an incredibly important point. And I think that's something that maybe a lot more people have woken up to uh, during the pandemic, because I think the pandemic forced a lot of self-reflection on people who maybe had been avoiding it. <laughs> and and I think now more and more people are asking that question. I always encourage people ask the question, why are you doing what you're doing? As you said, I mean, if you're doing it for a paycheck to put food on the table, that's fine. That's 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 a noble thing to do. But be aware of why you're doing it. And I think too many people are sleepwalking through their their careers because they default into something and they never really find a purpose. Well, it's interesting. You know, I, I mentioned we just started franchising about two years ago, and um, and people ask me, you know, who are you looking for? Who's your ideal franchise candidate? And I say, here's and my my VP of franchise development found this graphic. And I said, it's, if I can find somebody who, who has, who the opportunity with that, that core is intersection of these four things, they might be the right candidate for us. Then we can proceed. If they're not, if it's not the intersection of these four things, then I, then I don't want them. We're not gonna award them mm-hmm. a franchise. And these four things are, if you can find the intersection of what you love doing, what the world needs, what you can be paid for, and what you're good at, you never work another day in your life, right? Because you found that I call it the sweet spot of the between those four the intersection of those four things, and and that's really I think what has happened. People have gone, look, I want quality of life, I want flexibility. I was listening to a 60 minutes um, segment on why people are leaving their work, and they want flexibility because they want quality of life. Yeah, and I think that's the thing that's, uh, I, I think, again, I think uh, that was happening before the pandemic. I think it was after the financial crisis, a lot of people were making that kind of determination that I move and I live in a high cost area with a high mortgage to be close to this place that I work that even still takes me two hours to get to in rush air traffic. And then guess what? The first time there's a downturn, who gets let go? Ooh, it's me and I'm stuck in a high cost area with all the and I think that's when people started to say actually maybe that's not the best way of doing it and now with the pandemic and I and with the advances in in remote working and virtual working um, I think uh, you know there's a lot more people who as you say are are looking f- to construct their life in a different in a different way and that's why I think businesses have to adapt to that yeah a- absolutely as an employer we have to meet um, our potential employees where they are. And so we're working on things. I've been just talking to that with my, with my franchisee teammates, fellow business owners, and said, hey, you know, we've got to think differently about the workforce. Perhaps instead of thinking, um, let's say a small office needs four employees working you know, uh, full time, which would be four times 40 hours. Let's think in terms of we need 160 hours of, of, of work that could be eight employees working 20 hours and they have the flexibility to pick their 20 hours and they would rotate that or something, right? Um, and oh, by the way, if you do that, um, you can still generally, depends on the split state you're in, depending on who your providers are, you can generally give them benefits, which also, give, you know, you don't necessarily have to pay them more. You just have to meet them where they are and understand what's important to them. And, and the flip side of that is we're finding a lot of people having interest in becoming a franchise owner because that gives them, it, one, it's a wealth building opportunity, and two, it gives them a ton of flexibility because now they're in charge. Yeah, and, and I think that's so critical that organizations start to realize that, that, that if you are creative and, 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 and more flexible in how you allow people to operate, you focus on the results, the service, all of the things that you're talking about, the outcomes. But as you said, instead of saying four people in an office, X amount, you know, eight to six every day, blah, 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 is, you know, maybe there's only two people in an office, maybe two people are at home, maybe one person works through the night because they're an insomniac, who knows? But um, whatever you need to do in order, as you said, is if you've got quality people who give you quality work, then then figuring out how to get even more quality work out of them means let, let's find the optimal environment for them to operate in. Right. And it, and it takes trust. It, tra- mm-hmm. it takes trust in your teammates. And so, again, I'll, I'll come back to, um, you know, the value in the brand of veterans. Right. What are veterans known for? People who you can trust. Because since, for the most part, 
Uh, most of us joined the service when we were 18 years old. I, I went to West Point right out of high school at 18. Most people who enlist, enlist in the Ar Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines at, at 18. The point is, at 18, when we learned how to be an adult, adult, it was based on the cultures, norms, and values of the U.S. military. And so that's how we learned to be an adult. And there's no I in team. And if you, you know, you were, a, we had a term for that. It was called a spotlight ranger. If you were trying to do something about your, make yourself, give yourself more notoriety, no, you're cast aside because it's about the team. Again, trustworthiness, duty, you know, all of those values of a veteran. It gets to how you represent that brand. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because, I mean, trust has always obviously been a, a key criteria for, for customers and prospects buying from somebody, but it's even higher now, I think, after the the last couple of years, like the, the trust the, the trust radar, I would say the, maybe I'd say the mistrust radar is up there hugely with everybody, but they're really, I think people really want to work with people who who are yeah. authentic, who they can trust, all of that. So, I mean, I think we've we've kind of come back down to some basic human needs, even in our business. I tell my franchisees, um, listen, our service, people can say, wow, what a great company, you hire veterans, et cetera. That's great. But you still need something bad to happen in your life before you need us. It's not like you, you know, we're a, um, a temporary fence company where you can just decide to you when you put up a fence or a junk calling company. Oh, I got to clean up my garage. Mm -hmm. You need something bad to happen. So when I talk to my franchisees, I said, "Listen, go establish relationship, and 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 go something like this. Hey, John, it's great to meet you, and I appreciate it." And uh, you know what? It's better to know us and not need us than need us and not know us. So when something bad happens, think about the veteran guys. If you get your, your dishwasher has a leak, you have a roof leak, your ice maker uh, water line is kinked and you got water, think about who you would call. And it's, again, it's this brand, right? And so if you do that, you're not selling. You're just creating relationships. And if we focus on relationships, not transactions, one, Veterans generally stink at selling because we don't, we never had to do that. They feel dirty, but we're really good at relationships. So let's just go establish relationships, tell people what we're going to do, how we're going to help them if and when they ever need us, and then tell them it's better to, to, to need us. And you'd rather know us and not need us than need us and not know us. So when you have, when you have that bad uh, emergency happen, who are you going to call the folks you can trust? Yeah. And that's and I think this end of that's a great point, though, because, I mean, as you said, you're dealing with people when, you know, when things go wrong or whatever, you know, it's um, and that's and that's when you need somebody who who can reassure you or empathize with you or whatever, you know, not the guy who comes in and goes like, Ooh, oh, I don't know, <laughs> you know, you need because, I mean, you're already feeling like, oh, my God, what's this going to cost me? Um, so what I'm saying is, again, that that whole piece about being you know, trustworthy and reassuring and all of that, that's that's so critical. And we like to say what we do is science, but it's not rocket science. Right. <laughs> but what we want to do is explain to the people. So, you know, we do this thing every day. You know, we're responding to dishwashers, ice makers, hot water heaters, kitchen fires, uh, you know, mold challenges. Right. Every day. But every day we go to someone's house, it's the almost every day. It's the first day they've experienced it. And I have to remind my team, listen, you're getting familiar with this, but you want to break it down and explain it to them and create um, this sense of calm. Look, we understand what happened. It's probably the first time you've ever experienced this. We deal with this every day. We're professionals. It's science, but it's not rocket science. Whenever it has happened, we can help return to you know pre-loss conditions and we can fix this stuff. It'll be okay. Yeah. And that's what most people and that's what most people want. And it's funny how sometimes I mean, I even had something not too long ago was getting something installed here and it was like pulling teeth, getting some information. And, and eventually I had to say, listen, I'm only asking you this because I don't know I right. do your job. I have no idea. And I may this may be a, it may be a stupid question to you. But to me, I just want to know. Yeah. And we say so this is my phone, but we say, if you have a device. It's called the Dumb Horse Moisture Meter Pro. It's a cost about a thousand dollars, and uh, you know, so the average person can't afford that, right? But we explained to them, listen, we're going to put this up against the wall, and it's going to show us the relative humidity, the, the relative moisture content in this piece of drywall here. And today it's going to read X, and tomorrow it's going to read Y, which means it's drying. 
and then we're going to work our way down the wall because the water is wicking out of the out of the um, uh, out of the wall, and, and because we're moving dry air, the wet material, it's becoming humid. It's becoming water vapor. Then that machine over there is a dehumidifier, takes the water vapor and turns it back into water, and we drain it into your kitchen sink. And that's all that's happening. But we just have this equipment that helps us understand how to do it. And it's way too expensive for you to afford to have it. So we're here to help you. Yeah, no, absolutely. I love it. Um, listen, this has been fantastic, uh, Paul. And all Paul's information is going to be below the video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and VetCore. Yeah, so look, I, I'm a retired Army officer. I started this and when I retired, moved to Tampa about eight years ago. Uh, and two years ago, we started franchising. Um, you know, our passion is really creating opportunities for veterans, their immediate family members, and veteran advocates. Because uh, I personally recognize the challenge when I transitioned from the military. And so we wanted to do something about that. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're, we're a company with a cause and a company on a mission um, trying to help vets transition to civilian lives. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what a, and a, and a fantastic thing to do as well. I mean, given all the sacrifices that uh, you know, all the vets make, you know, that I really do think it's a, it's a, it's a shame that they're not better served when they, you know, come back. So it's fantastic, you know, the uh, the work that you're doing. I think it's so so necessary. And the point is, I mean, let's face it, you guys are highly trained. I mean, people invest a lot of money into you. Why wouldn't why wouldn't the rest of the population like benefit from you after you come out of the the service? Listen, we we won a bunch of awards. We we're uh, the Tampa Bay Startup Business of the Year. Um, we were the Bright House Regional Cable uh, Business Startup of the Year. And then we were the National um, Veteran Owned Small Business of the Year through the U.S. Chamber runner up in 2019. And, and so when that, that happens, and a couple of other awards, when, happen, when that happens, people say, you know, how, how, how did you do this? I said, shh, don't, I can't let the secret sauce out of the bottle. We hire veterans. You should yeah, try yeah. it. It's a, great, <laughs> it's a great recipe for success. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love it. It's fantastic. Well, listen, thanks again, Paul. Um, thank you all for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again really soon. Thanks so much, John.